<laughs> All right, we're here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming at you live from episode 11 of Life on the Rocks with your host, Connor the Rock. Today's featured guest in the hot seat is my good friend, Candace Kirkwright. How are you doing? Hi, Connor. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Honestly, it's an honest pleasure to have you here. For anyone who doesn't know, Candace is by far the most renowned motivational speaker in the city of Greater Sudbury. i got to give that to you. Uh, she's also a Toastmaster here locally, been involved in that for a number of years. Um, Candace, for anyone who doesn't know, tell them a little bit about yourself. My business originated as a result of a motor vehicle accident. I survived a catastrophic brain injury and when having to heal and learn all these lessons, I decided to share it with our community and our youth and that's how my brand, Candace Kirkbride, came alive. Absolutely, and it's a powerful brand. I mean, do you want to go into that a little bit more in terms of so you ended up sustaining a brain injury from a car accident. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. And then through that, you wrote a book called Change by the Rain. She's also an author, which is huge. Motivational speaker, author, you know, business owner mm -hmm. in a sense. Um, do you want to talk a little bit more about the, about the brain injury or the accident, how that changed your life? Sure. It's, um, it's a story that has to be told Absolutely. in order for me to, to share these messages with my audience. It was... Um, I was a pedestrian and it was a, an impaired driver that came by and struck my friends and I. My my boyfriend at the time died. I was left lifeless on the road. Wow. Uh, so a little bit about what I had to overcome. Like there was a lot of memory loss was part of it Definitely. and the stroke affected the left side of my body and I have I have nerve damage in my face. By the way, Connor, do you want a weather update? It's going to rain. Oh, you're doing it up. And yeah. uh, part of my life, right? And wow. then, uh, but what is beautiful? I know it's strange to say how beautiful it is to be so grateful for what I do have. These glasses are wonderful. When I lost vision in my right eye, I realized how grateful I am for vision because I can still see from my left eye so that makes me very grateful for what I do have definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. did I go off topic no it's, not at uh, all did, no, did, that, did I, no, I want to question? hear your story honestly I want to hear the, you know how it all got started and I mean that's a powerful thing if, if you know your boyfriend at the time died you've been able to overcome that you would never know in a thousand years and I, I say this honestly and sincerely since I've known you you never know you'd have a brain injury or anything like that right mm -hmm. you know so the way you carry yourself you're very energetic you're very jacked up like we're a lot the same and now you know you shake my hand you're like you're ready to go mm -hmm. um, well, how old were you when that happened 15 years old you were 15 so, years old at the time three months before my sweet 16th birthday no kidding and you probably had a big party plan too I know I hey, for the 16th <laughs> birthday yeah yeah no. well it wasn't so much uh, a big party because I mm -hmm. was uh, on my 16th birthday, I was just relearning how to walk, and I'll be I'll be celebrating my 32nd birthday wow. this June. So I'm very grateful for what this business and this message and my opportunity to touch, move, and inspire other people. Absolutely, that's, that's my new goal. Exactly. Well, how do you feel as a speaker when you get to go out there and spread your message to people? You get to go out there and let it go, is what I like to say. Like, how does that feel? Like, I, I say to people, you know, if I could be on stage every single day, I, I'd be there. You know what I mean? It makes you uh, feel so yeah. alive, right? I love it. I'm, and out of all of my audiences and all my students and anyone who hears me speak, if there's one person that I can touch, that makes the biggest difference in the world. Exactly. Right? If it's an audience of 500 people and I touch one person, that's huge. No, absolutely. That And, you know, that's our mission, right? We that's do it. that. Like, you know that Definitely. that's what you do too, right? Absolutely. you got to go out there. And it's like what I call the compound effect. You know, you touch that one person, then they carry that attitude, that mentality onto everything else they do in life, right? And I think that's powerful. And you have a lot more powerful of a message than me, the adversity you had to overcome. That was quite significant, to be honest. Like, that's something, you know, mm -hmm. in Canada, the way you walk around and you go out there and spread your message, you write books. Um, you're out there in the city, you know, shaking hands, doing your thing. Toastmaster. Connor, uh, you're so much younger than me. You are doing so much with your life, and I commend you on everything you're doing. You're that, like, we can't, there's no comparison. You know what we have to compare ourselves to? Ourself yesterday. We need to be better than we were yesterday. It doesn't matter what our neighbor is doing. Definitely. We need to compare ourselves to yesterday. That's all that matters. I think that's so right? important, really. Mm -hmm. No, exactly, and that's a good message. And we need to stop competing and... 
more so just encouraging other people. We encourage ourselves, each other, because we're in the same field, right? Exactly, that's right, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's funny Candace mentioned that. Something that I always like to say is that, you know, people are always hating, and I'm always loving. You know, you're always and I'm the opposite, yeah, right? I you know, that. go on the other side of it. So other people are always going to focus on, you know, the bad things, the negative things. Well, focus on what you have. You know, focus on what you can create. Like you said, you have your glasses, you can see. You're alive today, you're breathing. I think that's so important. I think we get so caught up in, in this world today uh, with technology. It's always like, what's going to happen in a year from now? What's going to happen this? Step what about the moment? Exactly. Tony Robbins style, you know? Oh, yeah, I, yeah. Isn't sure. he one of your favorite speakers? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I honestly love Tony mm-hmm. with everything. I've seen him once, too. Like, we got one of those tickets in Toronto. A few weeks go, ago, eh? A few weeks ago, yeah. yeah. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, the energy you carry off of that from that guy, right? Uh, but switching gears here for a second. So what got you started into public speaking? Let's go back a little bit here. Okay. Like what started you as a public speaker in general? Like you were mentioning before the interview was something to do with a teacher in high school mm-hmm. who believed in you. One teacher asked me to share my story, to give a speech for the students. And I thought, wow, he, he believes in me and my message. Then that means that I should believe in myself. Sure. So I took that. And then once I started with Toastmasters and started to really uh, polish my speaking skills, and then I was asked to speak at the hospital monthly with the party program. I'm still doing it. We're in like, I think year 12 or 13. Really? So then I I started doing that, and then the school started to ask me to speak, and that was my new mission. Oh, okay, this is what I'm doing. You need to work on what the universe provides for you. The universe will give you whatever it may be and you need to roll with that because that is your mission no exactly mm-hmm. i think it's, it's so important off of what you said too and it goes off of being grateful and i always tell people it's like gratitude's a drug you know just like you said you feel that energy you feel it alive you see people are like well this happened yesterday this happened well there it is <laughs> if anyone doesn't see it it's there it is right, right there cool. <laughs> and that's the universe just handing that out right in that in that moment right yeah. No, that's crazy. And, mm-hmm. and I think Life's full of learning. Do you right? ever, And I got to ask you, Candace, and knowing it's full of learning, yeah. exactly. I got to ask you, you know, I've never seen you down. You know, like, you know, where you meet some people sometimes, you, you're oh. tired, you're working a lot of shifts. <laughs> like, do you ever get, like, down in the dumps? Like, oh, always, Connor, you know? little Miss Sunshine here. If you were to live with me, you would say, you would know. Like, you know, when it's going to rain and I feel very drained and the, the weather's just really kicking my butt and I am just, I need a nap because I'm so cranky. And you know what? Little Miss Sunshine does have her blue days. Uh, you don't want to be around for those. For but, sure, for sure. You know, those who love me are used to it and they're... <laughs> they could feel that? Yeah, yeah no, they do. Well, let's go off of that then. So, so you know, if you have your days and, and her book title for anyone looking on Amazon, Changed by the Rain. Life After a Brain Injury. There it is. Look, I love that. Just ran at the end. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's the subtitle. What gave you the title? So Change by the Rain, is that intuition you have? Like, good. what exactly is it? That's a good question because yeah. it uh, it's a metaphor and it's a literal meaning. Um, physically, I've been changed by the rain. I feel the rain coming because of the nerve damage. But I should also tell you, you need to read the book to understand the real meaning because the metaphor, I've been changed by the rain in the sense that a healthy brain has been described as a raging bonfire. Okay. okay. So then the injury is the water on the bonfire. Okay. So it puts out part of the fire. The fire. Yeah. And then the, the chemistry of the fire, which is Candace, has changed. It isn't less, it's just different. No, exactly. But for more details, you, you need to read the book to actually have a full understanding of it. No, but, absolutely. Uh, I've got to get deep into your book as well. And just knowing you personally, go on though, sorry. Mm-hmm. And like when I was going through all my therapies to rehabilitate, my my speech therapist would uh, work with me on um, like a metaphor is figurative language. Okay. So I didn't know what a metaphor was, and they had to teach me that. And my the title of my book is a metaphor. So my speech therapist she attended my first book signing, and I cried so hard, oh, and I had really? to tell her, look at the title. That's a metaphor, and you taught me what that meant. Wow. Well, yeah. And it was like it was pretty special it's for me. It's powerful. Wow. Mm-hmm. You know, hundred percent. It was. It goes that much deeper than just the surface of what you know of your content and mm-hmm. your message, right? No, I find that I find it interesting, you know, how, how you started off like that and then all of a sudden transitioned into this book and like I'm assuming you've gotten such good rapport, like a lot of good feedback from the book. I have. You know, like a lot of people must be reaching out to you and, and when they see like they have everyone thinks, you know, sometimes we have bad days, right? And that's why I was asking mm. you, you get oh you get gosh. down in the dumps, but then 
seeing you overcome that sometimes. I see your posts, I see your things, it inspires me. I say, you know, I've had a bad day, but you know, I never had to deal with something of that capacity, you know, of that kind of, you know, having to persevere. But then again, Connor, you know what? You and you are survivors. Maybe it may not be this. You may, maybe you survived your childhood, mm -hmm. or maybe you survived uh, a death or a divorce or a failure, or maybe you just simply survived your day. That's true, yeah. So we are all survivors. It doesn't, you know, we shouldn't compare like what, because you know what? Um, struggle is universal. That's so true. everyone can relate, especially my book, because even though it's about a brain injury, that's how it originated. There's so many lessons in my book. Like for instance, forgiveness is a very big part. Definitely. And everyone in their life can relate to forgiveness and anger. Yeah. And it's just so beautiful how I've taken such a, a terrible part of my life and changed it around and shed like sunshine into exactly. my life because after I forgave Connor, if you would have known me back then, you would have seen that I was down in the dumps because I hated the world. Definitely. And then after I forgave, it opened up doors for me. Was there anything that, that got you to forgive or did you hit a moment in your life, like a breakthrough moment where you said, this is it, I got to let this go or else it's going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Like what kind of helped you get through some of that to get that forgiveness? You got to read the book. <laughs> I know, I, know, I, know, I, know, I see that, no, for, I know that, but for anyone out there, no, right, I know. That that's, that's no, where it's I know. important, right? My friend Angel in college, she ultimately helped me through that process towards forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And it was it was so powerful. The story that she shared with me ultimately made me dig deep inside and think about the situation in such a different a different light Absolutely. that I had to I had to realize that I needed to let go of that baggage in order to heal and in, in order to love my life. Definitely. And my tagline on the back of my business card is love life because life loves you. And that saying came to me the day I forgave. No kidding. So no. that's why it was so powerful and so necessary for me to be able to do that and share that with others. That's like one of the highlights of my keynotes. No, absolutely. Yeah, you go in there and it's like let it go. And like I, I use a different like thing, like yours is a different message, right? And I'm like, just let it go. You know, it's one of those things that I think a lot of us harm you know guilt and different things for people mm -hmm. it's like oh they they smited me or they did this to me and I honestly it, it's probably such a pressure when you let go of that like you probably felt such a sense of relief when you're like okay this is it and then it kind of transformed you into okay. what you are today right like like, like the sunshine went from like darkness it, to sunshine yeah and it's like into a butterfly right like yeah. the the caterpillar like the cocoon yeah. the caterpillar the butterfly well this is the butterfly both of us <laughs> no, exactly. Right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so powerful. Um, crossing over here for a second, being like, you know, because I, I wanted to aim on the motivational side. This is important, Candice. And I asked you this before. I just wanted to get you guys ready. She's a motivational speaker, literally the best in the city of Sudbury. Mm -hmm. What do you have to do to get motivated? If someone's sitting out there, I want to hear your perspective on it. What is it? Like, how do you get motivated? Mine, I, I use a little bit of an extreme example. We all know it. I dropped it in my keynote actually yesterday uh, at the Unbreakable. And I said, you know, I use it from Gary Vaynerchuk. It's like, you guys are going to die one day. You know what I mean? And I don't say it as an extreme mentality to be you know, mm -hmm. rude or anything, but it's like, guys, that's why you pick up the phone. That's why you do this. This is why you, you kind of try to live with no regret. What is your secret? If, you want, if someone wants to get motivated, how do you do it? We often look outside ourselves for motivation. We read books. We attend conferences. We, we, we search outside, like externally. For motivation people will tell us to be motivated but you know what how did those people get motivated well they motivated themselves motivation or hope or faith or anything comes from within you need to tell yourself because nobody is really going to kick yourself in the butt unless you do and no one you won't like right you're you won't work unless you do Exactly. You knew, like motivation comes from within. Exactly. You need to k kick yourself in the butt and say, you know what? I can do this because you can do it. You can do anything. <laughs> Absolutely, I love that. No, that's huge. <laughs> you know, I call it like my, my example to that too. Like you're, that's so powerful. Uh, it's like you know, motivation's like a fire. It's like if you if you stop adding fuel to the fire, it'll burn up. Mm -hmm. Like the eternal fire, right? Like you have the fire, the passion. 
Um, and, and one funny thing to add off of that was like I, I was at a conference one time in San Diego and, and Jack Canfield, you know, the chicken yeah. noodle soup for the soul. Mm-hmm. And he showed up that clip of like some kid, he's like, you know, for people that can't get motivated, they can't find the internal fire. It showed like a kid like going to push his, his sister off of uh, like the diving board into the water. You need that kick, right? Sometimes, well, yeah. Sometimes you do, yeah. right? But, but it, that'll only do it for so long. Like you said, you need to get the internal fire, like the one that's going to keep burning no matter mm-hmm. what happens. That passion that you have whatever dream you have that dream who's going to reach it for you you need to reach that dream or you know what that dream will disappear but it will always be there if you focus all of your attention on it no absolutely. that's that's how it goes no that's so right? that's so true I, I think you'll really like this uh, i was reading something on facebook from a, a gentleman named uh, Brandon T. Adams, he's a speaker as well. He said, you know, it's not a dream, it's a plan. You know, that's a good thing. Oh, I love that. I, love that. I yeah. never heard that until recently. He's like, it's not a dream, it's a plan because the plan's going to, you know, you're going to fall through whereas people think they're, you know, dreams. So it's just interesting just thoughts like, about people out there. Just like goals. Like dreams are are goals, but you need to make them a goal. That's why you write them down and you make your dream your goal. Exactly, yeah. You need to solidify that. Absolutely. And that's the thing. It, it, what is it? I, I remember I did a video on this. It was... Um, I think it's 87% of the population after New Year's doesn't follow through with their, or no, it's 8% of people are the only ones that follow through with their New Year's resolution. 8%. So we have 100,000 people, like, you know, a a low percentage of people, you know, it's going to, it's going to have that fall through. Oh my gosh. That's low. That is low. 8,000. You know what I mean? Are you one of those? (laughs) Hopefully you're not one of those. That's why we got her on the show. This is what we're doing. No, I meant like. Are you, are you one of the ones that, that follow those? The like, 8%. Yeah, are exactly. you the 8%? I know, I was lucky like for myself, like when it came to it, I always had that thing, I'd be sitting there and I was like, oh, I'm bored until I finally sat down one day and said, boredness is a weakness. In the sense that, because you're sitting there, it's like you, you have all the time in the world. You like, have so much to do, yeah. so get your butt in gear and do it. Exactly. That's, the, that's my internal dialogue whenever I say I'm bored or, right? We have so much to do. Like, look at our business. Exactly. There's no, Right? <laughs> exactly. And you see some of these speakers, like they're sitting out there and then they're not doing too much with it. And then it's, they wonder why their brand doesn't kind of go. How, how do you market in terms of like getting yourself out there? You know, you use Facebook. Um, is there any certain things you just want to go to these conferences? You use Toastmasters clearly. Yeah, Toastmasters. Um, I'm learning all about this as I go. For sure. And it's it's very interesting. But I, I, lo- I love social media. Like my favorite one is Facebook. I have follower, followers on there and they're, they're loyal. Twitter, I'm not really a fan of. Maybe because no one showed me how to use it. Maybe it's a lot not of noise. As, yeah. yeah, as user friendly. Yeah. But I try to just, you know, we start local. We start in our city, but we're, so we start to build on it, right? Like in 2014 when I spoke at Toastmaster Conference in Washington, that got a little bit of buzz about my name. Yeah over there and we need to start here and branch out and that's how it starts that's it one step at a time one brick at a time and that's all we can do it doesn't matter what it is hard work everything in our life basically is one step at a time that's what it takes no exactly and i think that's important too as a speaker and then you you have a message which is distinguished you know it's different as a lot of these motivational speakers and not to take a hit at a lot of them it's just a lot of it sometimes is too generic you know, they don't use enough of their story in it or they focus on content. Whereas you come in, I find, from a totally different lens. I've watched you speak a number of times and I think that's so important to distinguish yourself. And I, I hit on this everything, especially with millennials, depending on the job, whatever mm-hmm. you're doing, has to be different. Different is what people want to see. It's what sells, it's what goes, you know, farther. And you also have to touch people. That's Absolutely. how, right? That's it, no, for sure. That's what I was meant by the generic. Like, you know, sometimes it's generic, it's the same. It doesn't hit like a trigger, right, in the mind. Right. You know, whereas you, it's like you're coming in, you're telling the story, you can feel it. You feel the passion coming out. You feel, you know, the hurt you had to go through and then you overcome it, right? And then mm-hmm. you're still going. So for anyone else out there, I want, I want to say, so Candace, what can we expect from you in the future? So you got the speaking <laughs> Toastmasters, you got the book. Is there a second one coming? Are you going to just keep selling this one? Or I there... think I'm just going to stick with this one for Absolutely. now. When I was writing this one, I never, I wasn't really thinking of what is it going to be after this book. I need to start because you don't, you don't become a, um, like a bestseller overnight. You don't make your business boom overnight. I'm just going to continue working towards these goals and just keep doing what I'm doing and see where we'll see where it takes me one step at a time that's all we can do all right well for anyone who doesn't know who doesn't have her I have her tagged in the tagline for Facebook uh check out her book it's on Amazon right yeah changed by the rain uh life after a brain injury yes it's at chapters perfect there you go yeah 
and there was uh, something else or go ahead and at iUniverse.com there it is publisher yeah there was something else funny I wanted to plug in there but I can't remember what it was oh yeah so May 4th she's actually going to be the end oh. the, the closing speaker at the gala uh, getting motivated one on one event so yeah, she's at the, the closer. Steelworkers Hall beating the odds getting motivated yeah beating, conference beating the odds getting motivated Connor's the opener and I'm the closer that's it she's the closer I love <laughs> All that right. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to have you on here. Thank you so much, Connor. This is awesome. I gotta click that off. Okay. It's awesome.